by the hoary host of Hoggeth. How else do you start a Doctor Strange Omnibus overview? Join me today for an advanced look at this latest Omnibus reprint from Marvel Comics. So, stay tuned. Before getting started, a huge thank you to David Gabriel and the folks at Marvel for sending us an advanced copy of this Omnibus. And this is where it gets a little bit interesting, because this Omnibus is due out in the direct market and book market on January 25th. However, I've seen places like Amazon or Barnes & Noble already got their copies in, so something must have happened in the distribution between book market and direct market. Regardless, this right here is the direct market variant. On the left-hand side is your standard edition variant. So, again, they're using the Alex Ross cover for the standard edition. Meanwhile, the direct market now is using this pinup from Steve Ditko as the main cover. So, the master of the mystic arts, Doctor Strange, is back in omnibus print. This has been released in Marvel Masterworks, uh, Marvel Essentials, and then the Epic Collections. So we're going to be looking at the book, and I will say too that Doctor Strange Omnibus Volume 2, the standard edition has already been selling at places like Amazon for the last month almost, is what some of my viewers told me. So I find that really interesting because that book is also due out in the direct market and book market on January 25th. And this is the direct market copy. I'll be doing an advanced overview of this, or an overview, I guess, depending if you already have it or not, on Wednesday. Uh, but here it is, right next to Volume 1, and what the spines look like together. Volume 1 now having a new spine with the picture at the bottom, Doctor Strange here, the creators, and then the volume numbers down there. Now if you're asking, oh my gosh, that spine is so thin, it was always a thin book to begin with. Whether it was the original printing or this new printing, here are the backs of the books, and this one retailing for $75. Let's look at this one underneath the dust jacket. So you have the Doctor Strange logo there, Omnibus, Doctor Strange logo, and you have a different picture of Doctor Strange down at the bottom on the spine, Volume 1, and then the Eye of Agamotto. All right, so let's get this book open and talk about this particular run of probably the most strangest comic book hero during the Silver Age when this book was originally coming out. All right, let's get this book open. Here's your end paper. And Doctor Strange. And here are all the credits, what it collects. So this collects Strange Tales 110 to 111, Ward 14 to 146, and Amazing Spider-Man Annual Number 2. Not leaving anything out from the phenomenal Steve Ditko, who did the artwork for all of this so uh, you can see some of the inkers here and the letters however as well um, as far as the colorist they go uncredited because again much like with my mighty Thor omnibus overview that during this time a lot of the colorists weren't being credited by the comics on the books that were being published and sometimes it was the same person doing the pencils doing the colors but not every time so here is your table of contents. You have a couple of um, intros here, forwards from Stan Lee from the original Marvel Masterworks. You have volume one and volume two. And kicking it off with the Mulaney intro and then the Stan Lee intro that was originally published in 2005. So this book kicks off with Strange Tales number 110, where this character named Doctor Strange makes his first appearance. It's only for five pages. It's all about a man that can't sleep. Something is going on with his nightmares. And this also happens to be the first appearance of Nightmare. So throughout the book, you're going to be seeing a lot of first appearances of characters that are Doctor Strange's arch nemesis. And then some supporting cast. But yes, here you get to see Doctor Strange. You get to see his master where he gets some advice. Uh, this man, he can't sleep. He's having nightmares. So Doctor Strange investigates exactly what's going on. Turns out he's feeling guilt about ruining people's lives and because of money. So he tries to take advantage of Doctor Strange by pulling a gun out on him. But Doctor Strange, having an out-of-body experience, returns to his own body just in time to stop this guy from shooting him in the head. And it turns out that the only way that he can go back to have a normal night of sleep is to confess that he ruined all these people's businesses. 
And that's what the first story is about. So it's a different type of superheroes. Uh, because, you know, during this time we had the Fantastic Four, we had the Hulk, the Amazing Spider-Man, Iron Man, Captain America. So you get the idea of where Marvel was at the time. These stories in here in Strange Tales, and I'll talk a little bit about what this was, why he's not on the cover, uh, they were focused more on the occult, almost, in a way. And that's what this was, because uh, Stan Lee, during his intro, talks about how he always wanted to write stories about a wizard, like he used to listen to this radio program, and he wanted to do stories about a magician. So that kind of morphed into this, into this Master of the Mystic Arts, and... The superhero world was never the same after this. Now we have the first appearance of Baron Mordo, who's mainly his arch nemesis. Now, the character, I guess, didn't blow up when he first appeared because he wasn't in issues number 113 and 112. But he did come back for 114. Still nothing on the cover. So he did share this title with Johnny Storm. Johnny Storm was the headliner of Strange Tales. And... For the first few issues that you're going to see in here, it's uh, about five pages, and then we get to issue 115. And I want to talk about how important this is, because this right here is crazy that Steve Ditko is able to just, with including a splash page, is able to tell the origin of this character. This is the same origin story that they used in the Benedict Cumberbatch movie. It's about a surgeon a pompous surgeon, rich surgeon, that loses the abilities of his hands after a car accident. He descends into despair, and then you see some hope when he ventures out into the remote vastness of Asia. You never really get an exact location, and he finds his master. And then you see him redeeming himself and learning a new way of life, not using his hands the way he used to as a master surgeon, but learning of the mystic arts. And in here you see Mordo play a part in his past. And that's it. All told through eight pages, including a splash page. Just Ditko is able to condense these stories into nine panel grids right here. Who he's a master at doing. And still tell this really powerful origin story. And it's not until issue 115 that you get to find out exactly who Doctor Strange is or how he came to be. And man, every time I look at this cover, and they, I did the same thing with the Epic Collection and then the big uh, Ditko is Strange book, it just looks like computer-generated art right there for the thing, and I think it's just the colors that they used. And here is the confrontation with Nightmare, so you do get to see Nightmare come back. You see other villains as well. You see the first appearance of the Mindless Ones, uh, the big villain, of course, that a lot of people are familiar with, and that is Dormammu. And then you see him fight, um, or you see an encounter with the character known as Eternity. But you also get Wong in here, and then you get this young lady when he starts to fight Dormammu. And this is a really cool story. Um, her name is Clea, but she doesn't get named until probably the one of the last issues that Steve Ditko worked on. So all the art you're seeing in here is provided by the legendary Steve Ditko. And there are a lot of people that... Always try to put you in a corner and make you pick your favorite child. Is Which do you prefer? Steve Ditko Spider-Man or Steve Ditko St Doctor Strange? Man, that's a hard thing to do because they're two different types of stories. I love the creativity that went behind Doctor Strange. This is one of the few issues right here with Loki. Um, that you get to see him interact with the Marvel Universe, uh, outside of his own little pocket, what what I like to call pocket universe, but it's more like his little corner of the Marvel comics. You finally get to see him interact, which at first you think it's going to be Thor, but then it's Loki who he interacts with. So I thought that was really cool. All the covers are intact, even though they don't really feature him, except for like sometimes, don't forget, this comic also contains in a new adventure of Doctor Strange. But back to what I was saying, I think, you know, Spider-Man, of course, has a better uh, rogue gallery. I think he has a better supporting cast roster. But there are elements about Doctor Strange that Steve Ditko just pour his heart into, especially when we get to the Dormammu saga, when he's going through different dimensions, and you'll see here in a little bit, just the kind of artwork, and I know it's described as psychedelic, but I think when most people 
think of psychedelic, they think of like drug-induced kind of artwork. And I don't think that was the case with Steve Ditko. I think the man was just that super talented. And yes, when he starts going through different dimensions, you have artwork like this. And here he's starting to almost share half of the cover with Johnny Storm. But just the different types of settings that he was taking Dr. Stephen Strange on. I thought that was really cool. And I think it really showcased how much of a range Steve Ditko had. Here's Dormammu, the way he looked when he first appeared. Uh, but then later on, now we have... <laughs> Nick Fury is the person that's behind Strange Tales. There's not even a mention of Doctor Strange, but he was still in the magazine. Except for right there. Okay, that's how you can find out. But just look at that. Just that. This is his meeting with Eternity. Holy crap. That is... Uh, the things that were coming into Steve Ditko's head, like, that is freaking awesome. And of course, he drew inspiration from other artists, right? It's art inspired by art. But, man... I don't think, I think, for me at least, I'm going to go ahead and answer, I think I preferred his Doctor Strange more. I think, for me, I'm just going to say it, and this is my opinion, of course, that this is the best work that Steve Ditko produced. I don't think, after leaving Marvel, you know, in, when was that, 1966, I don't think he ever caught that magic again in a bottle. Uh, whether it was Spider-Man or whether it was Doctor Strange, I think this is as good as it got for Steve Ditko. And, man, it was just magic. <laughs> Didn't even mean to say that with Doctor Strange. The other thing I want you to note, too, is the Doctor Strange, when he started growing in popularity, because at first when he showed up, he kind of looks like an old 55-year-old Vincent Price-looking kind of character. You know, he's older. He doesn't look as he does later on. So it's almost like with the popularity of Doctor Strange, they wanted to de-age him a little bit from going, you know, in his late 50s. To somebody maybe in his 40s. Yeah, I can kind of see that. Now, you're going to hear this, and I'm going to sound like a broken record. But the way to describe these kind of stories are ahead of their time and sophisticated. Those are usually the terms that people use when describing the Marvel Silver Age of storytelling. And I think that is the best way to describe this story, though. Because it was ahead of its time. In, in storytelling and in artwork. And it is sophisticated, especially when you're talking about this particular surgeon. And what I was saying at the very beginning with the Eye of Agamotto, I'm not, I didn't say that, what did I say? Uh, the Hori Host of Hoggeth, all of that, like, was all made up by Stan Lee. A lot of people thought he was borrowing heavily, like, incantations from, like, Druish monks. I, like, a lot of people wrote in thinking that this was actually black magic that he was casting. And he was like, no, I was just having fun and just making up my own thing. Now, Stan Lee does end up leaving the book, and I believe Roy Thomas comes in and starts writing the stories towards the end of this run. But this is everything that Steve Ditko did draw. And sadly, even the final issue of Steve Ditko's Doctor Strange, here, let's get to that. He gets the cover. In the final issue of Steve Ditko's Doctor Strange, Doctor Strange is actually featured on the cover. But by now, I don't know, his art just wasn't the same. Like, it's still mind-blowing compared to the things that were going on at the time. And this is somebody that loves or learned to appreciate Jack Kirby, the older I got. But just look at that. Uh, it's still amazing. But I don't know. It just felt a little bit rushed, maybe. Like his heart wasn't into it. And then we get, of course, annual number two, which is the team-up between Doctor Strange and your friendly neighborhood, Spider-Man. So... This book does retail for $75. It has 456 pages. And we get, let's see, as far as the extras. The pin up here. This is an introduction to the Master of the Mystic Arts from 1974 by Stan Lee. You get original artwork here, Steve Ditko. Unused pin up by Steve Ditko. That's crazy. The t-shirt right here. Man, who was sporting a freaking Doctor Strange t-shirt in 1965? That dude was getting a lot of tell is all I'm going to say. You were you were sophisticated and ahead of your time. Marvel Tells. These are reprints of classic stories, including the ones that you saw in here. Fantastic Four and, of course, the Avengers and Captain America. Marvel Tells featuring Spider-Man now. This is a Jack Kirby cover. 
That is an awesome Ed Hannigan cover. Strange Tells. Now you get this particular cover. I thought this was Paul Smith, honestly. But it's John Byrne and Al Milgram. Huh. Maybe it's Al Milgram that drew it. Okay, so Al Milgram and John Byrne. Doesn't look like a Byrne picture. Because even if Byrne is inking it, he makes it look like his art. I don't know. Well, okay, maybe a little bit there in the face. This is another John Byrne. See, this looks more like Al Milgram. But anyway, these are classics. These are reprints of these stories that you're reading in here. That is freaking awesome. I just love the character design of Eternity, though. And some more classics by John Byrne and Al Milgram covers. Introduction, pinups, Kevin Nolan pinups from Doctor Strange classics. So there are some extras back here. That is freaking gorgeous. That is Arthur Adams. That's Michael Gold. Oh, I thought that was Michael Golden. Damn. That's Arthur Adams from 1983. That is freaking awesome. That's Michael Golden. There we go. And then the covers to the trade paperbacks of the Marvel Masterworks. And then, of course, the... Well, this is the standard edition cover to the Omnibus. Now, as far as the binding, it is sewn binding... Not much of an eye, but honestly, you're not going to need much of one when it comes to this particular type of book. There's not that many spread pages. Book lays over really nice towards the front and the back. This one is here is printed at the Donnelly printer. There we go. This is how your spread pages look. So, not much gutter loss, really. But that, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing this book, don't forget to check out our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for brand new graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They pride themselves on packaging your books so they arrive safely in an excellent condition as well as prompt and helpful service. Check out the bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. CGN is excited to announce that they are now taking pre-orders. They're making it easier for you to ensure that you don't miss out on the hottest releases. CGN is currently running a special promotion for your mentees. If you're a first-time customer, let them know that you were referred by near mint condition at the checkout and you'll receive a credit for free shipping on your next order. This promotion is valid for U.S. customers only. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with a kind of deep discount and quality shipping and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count, and build of this omnibus. Let me know in the comments down below if you have the original one, if you're picking this one up because you missed out on it the first time, if you have the epic collections, and if you've never read any Doctor Strange, this is your first time going into it, I would love to know all those comments down below. If you have any more questions, leave those questions down below. And let me know if you already have Volume 2, because for some reason, yeah, Volume 2, uh, at least the book market, uh, like Amazon and Barnes & Noble, already have their copies of Volume 2 and Volume 1, which I found really interesting. I don't know what ended up happening with the direct market distribution. But anyway, this was the Uncanny Omar. Thank you all so much for watching. Smash that like button, ring that bell for notifications to let you know when our videos are going live. We are on Spreadshop and Patreon, amazing ways to support the channel if you can do so. And more importantly, all of you, stay healthy, stay safe out there, and much love.